Well, good morning, church family. Happy New Year. Amen. It is a joy to be gathered with you here this morning, and, uh, and we are excited for the opportunity to, to, to worship together here in 2022. Uh, good morning, whether you're here in the sanctuary or with us online, we're delighted that you've joined us, and we would invite all of you to check in in one way or another. You can use the QR code here in the back of your bulletin or on the, on the screen. I believe we've been putting that up online, so you can use that to check in. Uh, you can fill out the check-in card in the chair back in front of you, and, uh, and it's super helpful for us to, uh, to know who's with us on any given Sunday. We're, we're, we've been trying to figure out how to prepare for this for a number of months. We're going to be printing a... a um, a, a directory for those that would like a print directory and uh, and we're going to decide who gets in the directory by who has checked in so if you say why would i check in well if you want to be in the directory you got to do it otherwise we think you're not here so go ahead and take care of that we would be uh, we'd be grateful if you were to do so it is communion sunday so if you're at home you're welcome to grab your communion um, elements at any point if you're here with us in the room we would encourage you to come forward to either of the two tables in the front two tables in the back and grab your communion elements and we will be uh, we will be participating in that sacrament towards the end of our time together. My name's Chad, by the way. For those that don't know, I'm one of the pastors on staff here, and I have the privilege to, to be your host today and to offer a few announcements. And so I wanted to let you know, you'll hear more from Pastor Seth about this, but um, today is the beginning of our 40 days of prayer. This is an initiative across the Christian and Missionary Alliance. Uh, churches in the Alliance all across the country are doing these 40 days of prayer together. And so we would encourage you to participate. Specifically, you can sign up uh, online to receive emails emails, which will include some devotional prompts. And if you'd prefer to go the paper route, we've printed the 40 days of devotionals. They're available at the info center, so you can grab that packet on your way out today and then jump right on board and pray with us over these 40 days. We're looking forward to that opportunity to, to come before the Lord each day together. Um, also wanted to uh, remind you, we've been talking about this for a few weeks now, that we are participating with some local churches and, and Kissel Motorsports. To, uh, to provide some relief supplies to the folks in Kentucky who were devastated by the recent tornado. And so we would encourage you to, uh, to bring some things to contribute to that initiative. There's going to be a truck leaving in a couple of days, and so you have until Tuesday to bring something to the church that will go on that truck that will head down to Kentucky to meet the needs of those folks. And we would encourage you to participate. Now you say, hey, what do I bring? Well, don't just bring whatever you decide you want to bring. For instance, water is not needed right now. They're fully stocked in water, so we don't need that. Uh, and, uh, and we would encourage you to look at this list also at the info center that will tell you specifically what the needs are at this time. So that will help sort of direct your preparations as you might contribute um, to that opportunity to be the hands and feet of Jesus for folks who are in need. Um, also wanted to mention that the uh, community group connection event will happen next Sunday. If you made a New Year's resolution to say, I want to get more connected at the church, I want to get to know some more folks, maybe a community group is the next step for you. And so next week, after both of the services, we'll have community group leaders of groups that are open to new folks. They'll be in the lobby after the services. You can go out and, uh, and make your way around, meet some of those leaders, and potentially consider connecting with a group. And, uh, and then the last thing that I want to do is to, uh, to introduce and welcome Buck Hall to our staff team. Buck, if you could stand and, uh, and, and give a, a little wave there. Uh, Buck will be joining our staff team as our maintenance manager in a part-time role. We are excited. Buck and his wife, Kim, have just relocated, moved to town here, and, uh, and Buck will be part of the team moving forward. We're excited to have, have some of those needs met in a very specific way. Buck has a tremendous amount of experience and gifting that will fit well with that role. And so we're excited to have him on the team. With all of that, I would encourage you to please stand and we will, we will worship the Lord together in song. Yes, our scriptural call to worship this morning comes from 1 Chronicles 29, 10 to 13. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. And let's begin by praising him this morning with hymn number 103, All Hail King Jesus. And we will move directly from that into number 104, O Worship the King.
feels good to praise the Lord this morning. Let's continue on with hymn number 300, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. And then we're going to move right from that into 301, We Will Glorify. Jesus, we glorify you indeed. We stand in awe of your glory and majesty and power. As the psalmist states, for with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. So light our hearts, Heavenly Father, and give us boldness to show forth the light and the love of Jesus to others. Thank you for making a way for us who were dead in our sins to become blood-bought, fully redeemed sons and daughters of the Most High God. Mm. What a fabulous identity we now have. Help us to be more like Jesus every day. And it's in the glorious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy New Year, guys. Girls, good to see you today. Happy New Year. Those of you who uh, are tuning in online, good morning to you as well. And for those of you who don't remember me or know who I am, my name is Seth. I'm the student ministry pastor here at State College Alliance Church. Uh, the last time that I perched up here and got to preach to you was on June 6th. It was right before my summer sabbatical. I got to take a time of resting with my family this summer, uh, which was a huge blessing after the completion of my seventh year of ministry here. Yesterday, uh, January 1, was actually the beginning now of year nine of being a pastor on staff here at State College Alliance Church. So I'm really grateful to be a part of this church family, but more than the, the work that I get to do, I am so thankful for the hands and feet of the believers who walk alongside me in youth ministry. Our awake student ministry leaders and our student leadership team 
They are the lifeblood of our ministry, investing in small groups, investing in the dreaming and, and ministry of our student ministry. So thank you to all of you who invest in the Next Gen Ministries. Um, I'm, I'm excited to come to you today here on this, this new year, this first Sunday of 2022. Anybody stay up to see the ball drop? A couple of you made it. Good job, guys. Man, you guys are very adventurous. Uh, whew, uh, I stayed up past midnight too many nights over the holidays, over, over weeks now, and my wife and I are kind of feeling that, a family's feeling that a little bit, but here we are, the first Sunday of the new year, and I'm honored to launch our church into 2022 with today's sermon. This is my hope for this sermon today, friends, that it would set the tone for your life for 2022, that you would have an awakening to the glory of Christ, and that the glory of Christ would be on the forefront of your minds today and for all of 2022 and prayerfully for the rest of your days as a church we're pressing into the alliance 40 days of prayer and our sermonizing over the next several weeks um, will be tying nicely with the daily devotion that uh, you have access to you can gather that in your email from signing up online you get the link from your your bulletin or you can grab a hard copy at the info center or we might have some in the church office as well reach out if you need one um but I encourage you to participate with us uh, daily. Use this simple devotional tool uh, for yourself to grow with us in the same direction or use it as a family at the dinner table or breakfast table or at bedtime. Use it as a, a tool in your community group or, or with a group of neighbors who you might wrangle together to just seek after the Lord uh, together. I think it'll be a blessing for our church family to align our thinking, our minds, and our hearts to what God has in store for us over the next 40 days on this journey of prayer together. I think it could be a great blessing for us. It would be like we're all driving the same Honda. It's like what Luke was talking about after Pentecost when he wrote in Acts 2, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, we were all together in one accord. Sorry, as a pastor, I had to make that joke. It's my civic duty. <laughs> you ought to see my other jokes. All right. Back on track, friends, back on track. The first theme that we will kick off with in this sermon series focused on reawakening is the glory of Christ. By the way, I do drive a Honda. I love Hondas. Ours is almost at 200,000 miles, our Odyssey right now. I'm gonna push this baby to three. I know we can make it. That's aside from the point. I reasonably named today's sermon Reawakening to the Glory of Christ. This is such a great time for this message. It's a new year. It feels normal this week, this season, to have fresh goals, to make new commitments, to be running with some New Year's resolutions. So for those of you tuning in online or at church today, Gold Star, you're doing great so far with your resolution of getting to church more frequently in the new year. I wonder if we could join together in this new year and commit together as a community, as a church family, to surrendering to God everything about us, all of our goals, all of our fears, all of the pride we have even, all of the brokenness from this past year, uh, and step into this new space now that is a posture of surrender before God, a surrender of 2022 to the Lord. If you're able to, would you stand with me? And let's pray together as we begin growing forward in 2022. And if you feel comfortable, I just encourage you to hold your hands out like this. This is both a, a giving and a receiving there's nothing magical or hyper-spiritual about this posture, standing here like this, but sometimes our physical posture leads to a spiritual posture, and I want us to lead in this way this morning, that our, our spiritual posture would be surrender, and that we would receive an awakening to the glory of Christ. Let's pray. Father, this morning we come before you, and we just surrender this year to you. We surrender our lives to you, and we ask for you to, to have your way in us, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask you to move in our midst and awaken us to the glory of Christ here this morning and keep that on the forefront of our minds throughout this year. God, we ask for your kingdom to come and your will to be done in our lives as it is in heaven in 2022 and beyond. And all God's people said, amen. amen. 
I want to kick off this morning, have a seat, I want to kick off this morning with a story called The Legend of the Sleeper. This is an incredible experience when you're a kid and you're having Christmas time with the family. Maybe you're surrounded with cousins and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters. And uh, there were these two orange chairs in the living room of my grandparents' house, my Nana and Pop-Pop. And these were their chairs. Pop-Pop's chair was on the left, Nana's chair was on the right. Pop-Pop's could recline and the feet would go up, but Nana's didn't. So like when the cousins wanted to get a chair, we wanted to get in Pop's chair because it would recline back. But if he came in the living room, you got out of the chair because you knew he was going for the, you know what I mean? Anybody else have Pop with a chair? Like this is Nana's chair, this is Pop-Pop's chair, right? So here's the magic, the legend of the sleeper. There could be so much commotion going on. Pop-Pop could waltz into the living room after a great Christmas Day feast, sit in Pop-Pop's chair, and his eyes would close. How is this possible? Everything that's going on, he's sitting there and his eyes close, and then slowly the jaw drops, and I'm like, Pop-Pop, you gotta wake up. We're having so much fun here. We wanna be with you. And do you know what he would say? Could you guess what he would say? I was just resting my eyes. I was just resting. Have you said that before? I used to think this was ridiculous, but now I have three children. I'm I'm 33 years old, and I feel I'm feeling it now. Like I'm understanding now why one can sit down and close their eyes amidst chaos and just doze off. This is the legend of the sleeper. I was just resting my eyes. So this morning I bring to you Ephesians 5.14, and it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, And Christ will shine on you. Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. So, friends, what is the glory of Christ? What is the glory of Christ that we need to be reawakened to today? I think it is what we all crave. I think it is what we all need. What we desperately need is the glory of Christ to shine on us. One of my favorite pastors that I like to listen to, John Piper, he refers to God's glory as the holiness of God going public. The holiness of God going public. God's holiness on display for the world to see. He references Isaiah 6.3. I want to ask you if you want to turn there, you can, or, or I'll just read this here to you. This is what the prophet Isaiah says as he describes a vision of the glory of Christ. He said in, in 6.3, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. They were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now you might have expected it to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his holiness. That would almost make sense, right? But it doesn't. It uses the word glory, and that glory is an awfully hard word to try and explain. It's like praise. It's like beauty, but it is greater than either of those words individually or combined. It is far more than what we can see and describe. This is Christ. He is holy. He is set apart, and the whole earth is full of his glory. Let me just try and take a shot at defining it for us a little bit here this morning. I'm not going to get this perfect, but to give you a painted picture of what glory is like. It's like pointing to Christ and making him more famous. It's elevating him. Glory is is bringing honor and praise to Christ. Glory is steering towards Christ and declaring beauty and majesty. Glory is magnifying Jesus and saying, the lion and the lamb, the fierce one who brought death to its own grave, and the meek one who did so by dying on the cross to take away the sins of the whole world. Glory. This is God. This is the Son of God, Emmanuel, sent to save sinners who died for us and rose from the grave on the third day. Glory to him and to his name. Glory, telling the world about the holiness of Christ. This is Jesus, our Savior, Sanctifier, Healer, and our coming King. God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
this is Christ. And he gets the glory. We give him the glory. And he is glorious. His holiness is on display for us to see. This is God in the flesh. We just talked about this this whole season. Emmanuel, God with us. It's amazing that humans had the opportunity to behold God walking on the earth. John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. This is Jesus, God, from God, full of grace and truth for us to see the holiness of God and behold his glory in our midst. Sinclair Ferguson wrote in his book, In Christ Alone, When we come to know Christ as our Redeemer, we discover to our amazement and joy that we have also come to know our Creator. Then we say, we have seen His glory. I'd like to share a story about Jesus where His glory is highlighted in a way that is just incredible, where we see a collision of Father and Son reveal glory here. One of the guys who journeyed with Jesus, his name was Peter. And look, I love Peter. Peter walked with Jesus feasted with Jesus. He saw Jesus perform many miracles, yet he was weak. He denied Jesus multiple times. Praise God for Jesus' grace. Jesus forgave Peter, and then Peter was reinstated and sent in Jesus' name by the power of the Holy Spirit to build the church of Christ and reveal God's glory to the world, bringing transformation. And Peter says this in his second letter to the church, for we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. Now Peter here, he's referring to the transfiguration of Jesus that Luke wrote about in chapter 9 of his gospel. It says in Luke chapter 9, uh, starting at verse 28, now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus, he's talking to the disciples now about what it means to follow him, what it means to pick up your cross and follow Jesus and, and be a disciple. He took with him Peter, John, and James, and they went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered. This is Jesus' face. And his clothes became dazzling white. And behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. This is an incredible moment. Now Peter and those who were with him were clapping and dancing because of this awesome thing they're seeing, feasting, and celebrating because of the wonderful thing that they're seeing? Bowing in humility because of the glory and power before them? No. They were heavy with sleep. It says Peter and John and James were heavy with sleep. But when they became fully awake, they saw his glory, and the two men stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and Moses and Elijah, not knowing what he was saying. As he was saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent and told no one in those days anything that they had seen. Does the meeting on the mountain encountering God and having a transformation ring a bell? In Exodus 34, Moses encounters God and his glory as he's receiving the law, and he's being transformed by his glory. 
But here, Jesus is transformed. His face is altered and his clothes are dazzling after this divine encounter with glory, with Moses and Elijah and the Father. All in this, all in this space, this is crazy. This is a big thing that's happening here. Peter, James, and John, they encounter the glory of God's voice directly and audibly here, and they're seeing Jesus transformed. Elijah and Moses there, they witness this. They see the three amigos, the three musketeers, three figures that have been used to reveal so much of glory of God to this world. And Jesus chose to include these three stooges. Listen to what Peter the stooge says. If you don't know what the three stooges are, just YouTube it. I'm just saying, Peter was a silly dude. He didn't know how to fully process what was going on. Peter says, how about, how about I make some tents for you guys? Moses can have a tent, Elijah can have a tent, and you can have a tent, Jesus. What do you think, Son of God, Most High, who is beaming? I just heard the voice of the living God who is full of glory. Do we need tents? He was sleeping. How could they be sleeping? But by God's grace, they were awakened to see the glory appear. And when he was awakened, he did see the glory. Often, when we are spiritually sleeping... And then we are spiritually awakened. It goes like this. I've, I've met Jesus. I have experienced the glory. Wow. Almost no words are appropriate to really describe it. When we have an encounter with the divine, with God's glory, sometimes all we can do is fall to our knees. And I don't just mean spiritually. I mean physically, too. Have you ever dropped to your knees to kneel in prayer to God? There certainly isn't anything magical about the position itself, but we equate that with an honoring, with, with humility before another. We practice this discipline in our Advent prayer odyssey in the fireside room with our student ministry, kneeling and praying. Many of our students and leaders said that this was the most moving station um, as, as we engage with the glory of God at Christmas time through prayer. But this wasn't the only time God spoke revealing the glory of Jesus. This same experience occurred when John baptized Jesus in the Jordan River. This is my son. The glory of Christ is his holiness on display for the world to see. And it is certainly God with us. I wonder if you have been exposed to the glory of Christ. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. So let's talk for a minute what we mean about reawakening. It means to have your eyes opened. Ephesians 1.18 describes it as having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. We tend to doze off on long journeys, on car trips, or even sitting in a chair at Christmas with loads of activities happening. So as followers of Jesus, who are on this spiritual, relational journey with Christ for the long haul, we may doze off. We may get distracted and wind up asleep or running off like a prodigal. So according to God's word, reminders are important. Sometimes we refer to reminders as reawakenings or revivals. These are gifts from the Lord. 1 Corinthians 4.17, Paul writes, This is why I sent Timothy to you, church, my beloved and faithful child. Timothy, I sent him to you to remind you of the ways in Christ. Peter said in 2 Peter 1.13, I think it is right, as long as I am in this body, to stir you up by way of reminder. Romans 15.15, put on some, uh, but on some points, Paul says, I have written to you very boldly by way of reminder because of the grace given to me by God. Reminders are helpful and important, and they're part of sharpening each other and reminding each other of the, the, the gospel and of the glory of Christ. We've got to keep it on the forefront of our minds for ourselves and for each other. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15 a great reminder. He says, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preach to you. Paul's writing this to the church in Corinth, but I think it's for you today as well. It's for us to, to cling to and be reminded of, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. Listen to what he says here, starting in verse 3. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. 
After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am, the la- I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Paul then goes on to remind and encourage the believers about the resurrection of the dead that would be to come, the resurrection of the body that would be to come. And in verse 34 of chapter 15 here in 1 Corinthians, Paul says, come back to your senses. Come back to your senses. He's saying you need to wake up. You need to have a reawakening. You need to remember the gospel. You need to remember the glory of Christ. And he says, and stop sinning. We see the glory, we experience the glory, and the glory impacts us from then on. Wake up and stop sinning. We need these reminders. We need reawakenings to the glory of Christ. We build our whole lives on the gospel. We need to keep reminding ourselves of it and reminding each other of it and growing in our knowledge of it. In our student ministry over the the last couple of years, we've been hosting revivals almost every season, Uh, a a time where we've hosted gatherings for students that we've referred to as revivals or awakenings, opportunities to simply be with God, to hear from God, worship God, and be together in community as as a body, as individuals coming together to give him praise and experience his glory. These moments have been life giving, eye opening, and so reminding of the glory of God. Speaking of which, our next student ministry revival is happening on Thursday, January 13th. So if you're in 6th through 12th grade, shameless plug, come and join us for our time of reminding each other of the glory of Christ and offering him worship and praise. Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Friends, I need the glory of Christ to shine on me so that I remember how desperately I need his glory to shine on me because I am often like the Israelites wandering and wondering in the wilderness. The years between being freed from slavery and finding the promised land, can you imagine? You're, you're in this space and you have just witnessed the plagues in Egypt. You have participated in the first Passover where God's grace was extended to those covered by the blood of the lamb. You've been led by a pillar of smoke by day and a pillar of fire by night, having watched the Red Sea split and the Egyptians and all the hell of that history washed away in a moment by the power of God. They for sure have seen his glory. And then to experience hunger and thirst and say, things were better when we were slaves. They forgot God's glory. They forgot who it was that did that. He did these incredible God-sized things. How could they forget? How could they wander from that? But I am so like them, though. This is me, friends. In my flesh, I am tempted and prone to wander. I am rooted in Jesus, and I know his word, and I'm growing in his word. I love his spirit, and I am so thankful I have a heavenly father who loves me. But in a moment, I am so prone to wander. I'm so inclined to pervert glory from looking to Christ and giving all the glory to him. You see, because I want glory to be mine in my flesh, I want glory to be mine, and I am so quick to forget. I need God to continue to do a great work in my soul of binding my wandering heart to him. And maybe you're in that same space today. So who says you need awakened? Who says you need a reawakening to the glory of Christ today? Romans 3.23 says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We're separated from God's glory because of sin. And I don't want to get all fire and brimstone on you, but I'm going to share this verse from Revelation 21.8. It says, as for the cowardly, as for the faithless, the detestable, for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. I hear you. You're saying, Pastor, that doesn't sound cheery and getting me pumped up for my New Year's resolutions. I know. Hang with me. 
there's good news to come. Romans 5.19 says, For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners. This is referring to the fall of man in the garden. Having been kicked out of the Garden of Eden and the holy presence of God in their midst, from this point on, all of humanity is born into sin. We are born sinners. So through one man, disobedience comes to all. Sin comes to all. So also through the obedience of one man, the many will be made righteous. This is referring to Christ's obedience on the cross. Disobedience paid for with great obedience. The first part of this I realized was a bit heavy, but it is God's word. It is truth. We need this good news, and we need to be reminded of it. We need to be awakened to the gospel. So listen to this good news. While we're, while we're sinners, God showed his great love for us, that Christ died for us. This is what Paul is talking about in Romans 5.19. The obedience of Jesus on the cross brings righteousness to those who believe. And we need to believe. We need reawaken to this because we fall asleep. We tend to get apathetic. We tend to stop caring, especially with so many comforts and securities afforded to us. We are prone to lack a desire for the kingdom, especially when we're not reminding each other of it. We believe our fears. We tend to live in sin. We walk forward with an ignorance to the truth of God's word because we're comfortable with the here and now. We can really quickly and easily slip into the habit of just living for ourselves and forget that God redeemed us and placed us in this town at this time to be with him and let the overflowing of being with him pour into the community around us and beyond so that people, ourselves, and others in our communities could be reawakened to the glory of Christ. We all need reminded of this. So may the Spirit of God awaken you to the glory of Christ today. How? How are we awakened to the glory of Christ? Well, in our student ministry, we try to create spaces for students to become exposed to and experience Christ, his kingdom, and the biblical purposes of his church. We aren't trying to recreate the glory of God. We can't do that. I can't do that. But we can absolutely create spaces for people to come as they are and get a taste of community of believers who are seeking after the glory of God. We preach the gospel. We can testify to God's glory. And we can care for one another, showing love in our small groups, serving together, and more. But only God can reveal his glory when and how he chooses. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 3, he said, Beholding, oh, now, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed in the same image from one degree of glory to another. This comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. This comes from the Lord. He does the reawakening. This truth of the awakening being the work of the Spirit comes with a great promise that we are being transformed and becoming glorious by witnessing God's glory. I think of even Paul himself, the apostle. Paul was asleep to the glory of Christ. In fact, to run the metaphor all the way down the road, Paul was overdosing on spiritual sleeping pills until he had an encounter with the glory of Christ. In Acts 9, he was awakened, he was revived, he was remade and renewed. He was reclaimed and redeemed by Jesus Christ, for Jesus Christ. Paul's encounter with glory set him apart to bring about awakening in others. Though Paul is dead and gone, his legacy of transformation from an encounter with the glory of Christ has shaped history forever, shaped the scriptures, shaped my life with texts hidden deep in my heart from a young age. Paul, who was ravaging the church, was saved by grace through faith in Christ after having the the personal encounter with his glory, after an encounter with the presence of Christ. So how can you be exposed to the glory of Christ? How can you experience the glory of Christ for yourself? This certainly isn't an exhaustive list, but I'd love to share some things with you that we try to do in our spaces to create opportunities for students to experience and be exposed to the glory of Christ. Continue to be in spaces where you hear the word teached faithfully. Worship God in spirit and truth in community. 
testify and listen to testimonies of God's work in the lives of people around you. There you will encounter the glory of Christ. We try and help students experience Christ's glory through chasing after his presence. We do this uh, on retreats. We do this multiple times a year. At least two times a year, we take our students on retreats, and we try and take our adult leaders on a retreat two times a year as well to break away for a couple of days from the norm, through, from the r- routines of, of everyday lives, to, to get away in solitude and spend time in community chasing after the glory of Christ. And these are great reawakening moments for those who participate. I wonder what aspects of, of practicing being exposed to the glory of Christ you might need to just welcome into your life to allow for a reminding and a revival. So once we have been exposed to the glory of Christ, how do we respond? How do we respond to an encounter with the glory of Christ? I think there's only one word. I think it is, I think it is worship. It is give Christ glory because he is glorious and he deserves all of it. It may look like a song. It may look like a dance. It may look like tears. It may look like being still and silent. It may look like falling on your knees in a posture of humility and praise and prayer. But it is a whole life shift now. It is surrender and participation It's laying down my life mission to pick up his great redeeming mission. It is a love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor shift. Your response might be an expression that may come out in a moment like an act of praise, but it is your life that worships Christ. Give him glory. He is glorious. This is your response to awakening to the glory of Christ. I'm going to share three practical steps you can take with you if you're taking notes. Three practical steps to responding to the glory of Christ here today. Number one, surrender. Surrender all of yourself to Christ as Lord and Savior. Maybe you have not done this yet. Today could be the day for you to do that. Maybe God's calling you to a space of surrender right now. Maybe the Spirit is causing you to behold the glory of Christ today and asking you to surrender today. Maybe you've done that, but you need to do that again today. Bow your heart to the Lordship of Christ, our Savior. Number two, renew your mind. Renew your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Read God's Word daily. Study the Word. Know the Word. It is living and active and will take root in you and bring about transformation. I'm not saying something new. I know Paul wrote that in Romans 12. He said, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. R.C. Sproul wrote in his book, The Holiness of God, as a response in light of what Christ has done for us. He says, because the days of animal sacrifices are over, many people assume that all sacrifices offered to God are abhorrent to him. That is simply not true. Here, the Apostle Paul calls for a new kind of sacrifice, a living sacrifice of our bodies. We are to give God not our grains or our animals, but ourselves. This new sacrifice is not an act of atonement, It is not a sin offering. The sacrifice of our bodies to God is a thank offering. It is a response in light of what Christ has done. So surrender, renew your mind, and third is surround yourself. Surround yourself with people who hunger for more of the glory of Christ. People who hunger for Christ sharpen those who are hungry for Christ. It is a part of God's sanctifying plan for your life. This is why community groups are so vital. Men's ministry, women's ministry, 2030 Connect, our Prime Timers ministry, Alliance Christian Fellowship on campus, our Awake Student ministry, 252 in Awana. There is a place for you to connect and be sharpened and to sharpen others. It's here in the space of surrendering, awakening, resurrendering, reawakening, whatever your step is today that you need to take, where the shift from the legend of the sleeper becomes the legacy of the awakened. 
Whatever you do, friends, your whole lives are to be lived for the glory of God because you have had a chance to experience his glory. We're going to take some time now to consider responding together in response to the great love that God has lavished upon us. I'd like to invite my wife, Alyssa, to come on up here and join me uh, as we partake in the communion table together where we reflect on the holiness, the glory that our good and gracious God has put on display for us. Friends, there's nothing magical in this bread or in this cup, and if you haven't gotten your communion elements, there's some available around the sanctuary. This is for you. This certainly signifies the body and the blood of Jesus. We partake in communion to remember and celebrate that Jesus died for our sins. He was the sacrificial lamb that made things right between us sinners and God. Communion is, communion is for those who are believers in the death and resurrection of Jesus. It's for those who have said, I have put my faith in the finished work of Christ. So I want to give us all an opportunity right now to consider, do you know him? Have you surrendered your whole life to Jesus as Lord and Savior? If not, I hope that you might come to know him today and celebrate with us. Romans 10, 9 says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Let's take a moment to prepare for communion and pray on these things. says, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat and remember together. After supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's drink and remember together. Jesus, thank you for revealing your glory to us. Thank you for inviting us to be a part of your kingdom. Thank you for the blood that you shed, that you have applied to those who believe. We want to see your glory, God. We want to elevate the glory of Christ. We celebrate that here today. And all God's people said, stand and join us for our closing hymn number 493 glory to his name
Amen. What a joy to acknowledge the glory of our Lord together today. We're delighted that you've been here with us, that you've worshiped with us, that you've received communion with us today. And as we prepare to go from here, if you have a prayer need of any sort, we would invite you to come down forward to either side of the lower platform. There are folks from our prayer team that would be delighted to pray with you. You can always fill out one of the prayer cards in the chair backs in front of you and drop those with the check-in cards and any offerings on the drop boxes on your way out. If you're with us online, you can just click the request prayer button and somebody will pray with you right now. So as we prepare to go from here, let me send you out with this benediction from the end of the book of Hebrews. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Would you go today, friends, in that peace for his glory?